Hi, uh, my name is Ning Long Li. I am from University Tunggu Abdul Rahman, Malaysia. Uh, I would like to give a talk with the title 3D Placement and User Association for the Balancing Among Area Based Nations Nature Inspired Approaches. So, this is the outline of my talk. I will first uh, introduce about the 3D placement and user association and also about the load balancing uh, problems among the area-based stations and the corresponding challenges. Then I will describe the 3D placement and user association model used for solving the load balancing problems and the approaches which are nature-inspired uh, used in solving the load balancing problems. Uh, and finally, conclude the, finally, to conclude this talk and provide some future directions for the load balancing studies. Okay, so first uh, I will give the introduction on the 3D placement and user association as well as the loop balancing among area based stations. Okay, so in the traditional uh, mobile cellular networks, uh, base stations are static, they are fixed locations. So the coverage that is provided by these base stations are also limited to a certain distance. Users who are located beyond this uh, coverage area cannot be served. So to overcome this problem, area base stations, which are actually base stations mounted on the unmanned aerial vehicles, uh, they can address this, address this problem because they can uh, hover in the, uh, in the air, in the 3D space, and they can be strategically placed at, uh, uh, in the air to, uh, in such a way that the network coverage and capacity can be optimized. And because of this feature, uh, it has been regarded as one of the key technologies to uh, support the future growing demands uh, in the future cellular networks, such as the sixth generation networks. Okay, so uh, let's go into the 3D placement and user association for these uh, area based station networks. So given an area, uh, we have multiple area based stations powering in the air, and then there are a number of uh, users on the ground. So when we want to uh, deploy area based stations uh, over the area to provide uh, connectivity or coverage to the users on the ground, so the uh, positions of the uh, area based stations have to be uh, located at a point where it can provide uh, optimum coverage, uh, optimum uh, signal strength to the users or, uh, in the area so that they can have a uh, good connectivity. Okay, so the placements of the area based stations play a very uh, important uh, role in uh, providing uh, optimum coverage and connectivity. And of course, with, the, uh, with this area based stations uh, placed in the air, uh, we also need to uh, determine uh, which users should be associated or served by which uh, area based stations. So these two things are actually uh, equally important and somehow they are, uh, especially the placements of uh, area based stations, they can affect the user association because uh, different positions of the area based stations may result in different users associating with different uh, area based stations because the users have to associate with the area based stations or be served by the area based stations that can provide uh, the best or optimum connectivity. Right, so uh, 3D placement and user association uh, for area-based stations are uh, intensively studied uh, with the objective mostly on uh, optimizing the network coverage or trying to uh, serve as many users as possible. Uh, however, uh, the 3D placement and user association in area-based stations uh, are actually also important for achieving uh, load balance. Okay, As you can see in this slide here, uh, there are two area-based stations. One is serving quite a number of users, while the other one is serving quite a small number of users. So we can say that the, uh, the area based station in the left hand side right, is underutilized, and the other area based station is overutilized, serving too many users. So this uh, creates an unbalanced uh, load uh, distribution among these two area based stations. So it is important for uh, the area based stations to uh, have a more balanced. Uh, uh, load distribution uh, so that the underloaded area based station can actually uh, uh, offload some of the users from the overloaded uh, area based station because uh, each area based station may have a certain limited uh, amount of capacity or number of users that can be served. So it is best to uh, uh, allow each uh, area based station to serve a reasonable number of users uh, and in such a way that they are not overloaded or underloaded. Okay. So, uh, the 3D placement is then uh, playing an important role to achieve balanced load distribution. Okay, for example, if I move the this area based stations toward this direction as pointed in the arrow, then it can this coverage can uh, uh, cover some of the users in the other uh, service which are currently served by the other uh, area based station. Then these users can be offloaded 
to the undiluted area based stations, then the load distribution among the uh, area based stations will be more balanced and uh, a bet uh, better utilization. And there's no uh, uh, reducing the overloaded condition. So that's how important the 3D placement is for uh, load balancing among area based stations. So having said that, um, there are a number of challenges in load balancing. Uh, with the feature of the area based stations uh, being able to hover in the air, uh, it actually adds uh, additional dimensions or introduces uh, uh, new variables to achieve the load balance for load balancing among area based stations. And these additional dimensions are actually the positions of the area based stations. Uh, in the traditional uh, cellular networks, the existing load balancing schemes uh, they just uh, usually they focus on the user association part, uh, where which base station should serve which user. Okay, uh, but for area base stations uh, networks, uh, the load balancing has to consider both user association, which uh, area base station sh should serve which user. The positions of the area base stations are also variables uh, uh, to be considered because they need to be placed at uh, good locations so that they can provide an optimum coverage. Uh, optimum connectivity to the users. So it actually adds uh, additional dimensions to the computation for load balancing. Besides that, uh, we also have constraints and requirements, such that such as the uh, limited user capacity of each area-based stations. And also we have to take into account the quality of service requirement uh, for each user. And we also have to consider the location between the area-based station. They should not be positioned or be placed at the same positions, right? Uh, otherwise the two or more than two area based stations uh, would collide with each other. Okay, next uh, I'm going to uh, talk about the 3D placement and user association model for area based station networks. Okay, so um, to address the load balancing issues in the area based station networks, uh, we consider uh, this uh, 3D placement user association model as shown in this uh, figure here. Um, we can see that there are a number of uh, area based stations and a number of users. We model this uh, based on the 3D Cartesian coordinate system. And we make the assumption that each user is served by uh, only one uh, area based station. And the user which is associated with uh, an area based station is allocated a number of subchannels that are different from those allocated to other users. So there will be no interference uh, between the uh, any two or three base stations and more. So uh, we consider that the area uh, of uh, the area that is um, being uh, covered by the area based stations are bounded as shown in this uh, space boundary uh, constraints. And also the altitude for the area based stations are also bounded okay, from a certain minimum altitude to a certain maximum altitude. Okay. We consider the channel model, which is the air to ground communication model, uh, where we consider the line of sight path loss as well as the non-line of sight path loss. And the uh, total path loss will, will be the combination of the line, line of sight and non-line of sight. And from this path loss model, we can uh, model the signal to noise ratio uh, between each area based stations and uh, each uh, uh, user. And as, it, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, each user is only uh, associated with only one area based station. So that is a, a condition captured by this constraint. And then each uh, area based stations uh, can only serve up to a certain number of users, which is captured by this equation, uh, this constraint. And also the positions of each area based station, they should not be the same so that they can avoid collisions, which is captured by this uh, constraint. All right, next, uh, I'm going to talk about how the nature inspired approaches uh, can solve the load balancing problem uh, based on the 3D placement and user association model described earlier. Actually, there are some uh, techniques, 3D placement and user association schemes that, are, that have been developed for load balancing in area based station networks. These techniques are based on such as the coalitional game theory, machine learning, and also the virtual force field theory. Uh, thus far, um, there are less uh, nature inspired approaches that have been uh, used to address the load balancing issue. And actually the nature inspired approaches, they are techniques that imitate uh, natural phenomena. Uh, such as the biological evolution, animal or insect behaviors, uh, physical processes, natural processes. So uh, these techniques uh, have been used for uh, other problems and have been shown to uh, 
successfully solve uh, many other complicated problems, as, especially dealing with a large number of variables. Uh, and in this case, uh, these approaches are actually useful for 3D placement, especially because if we are dealing with multiple error based stations, and each error based station has a 3D coordinate, so each error based station corresponds to uh, three variables. So if we have multiple uh, error based stations, then we have multiple of three uh, variables to be considered and to be computed for uh, achieving the balance. So it has an advantage of solving a, a large scale problem uh, compared to the uh, existing uh, other existing techniques. So um, we have looked into these uh, nature inspired approaches and we, in particular, we have um, considered uh, two techniques which are quite uh, popular. One is the gray wolf optimization and the other one is the particle swarm optimization. So uh, we will uh, review uh, how these techniques are used to uh, solve the loop balancing problems. Okay, so the uh, gray wolf optimization is one of the techniques that we consider in solving the loop balancing uh, issue in area-based station networks. It's actually inspired by the behavior of gray wolves in pack hunting. So the uh, pack hunting behavior are modeled as the formulas shown in this slide here where you can see that xp is actually the uh, position of the prey and xw is actually the position of the wolf which is hunting the prey uh, the second equation models the approach uh, approaching or chasing or, or encircling and also the uh, attacking of the, uh, of the wolf toward the prey okay, and these uh, equations or these formulas are based on some uh, random or stochastic uh, parameters which are modeled as a and C. So uh, basically, uh, these equations are based on the behavior of the wolves in hunting a prey, where the wolves will first chase, approach, and check the prey. And in the next level, the wolf will encircle uh, the prey, and then they will attack the prey together. So this uh, social behavior, this hunting behavior, are modeled based on these mathematical uh, formulas. So to implement the gray wolf optimization for loop balancing in area based stations uh, network, so uh, we model the load of each area based station as the ratio of the number of users associated with the area based stations divided by its maximum user capacity, right? And then we also model the uh, quality of service requirement for each user, where the achievable effective capacity uh, of each user must exceed a certain uh, threshold. And this effective capacity is, is actually a um, uh, performance metric, which is a uh, statistical uh, delay quality of service performance metric that uh, indicates the maximum arrival data arrival rate that can be supported by the user. And then we try to uh, achieve the load balance among error uh, base stations by maximizing uh, the summation of the logarithmic function of the load of each uh, area base stations. And here we have um, four sets of variables, x, y, z, which are the 3D coordinates of all the error based stations, and c uh, uh, is actually the user association variable uh, that tells us uh, which user should be associated with which uh, error based stations. So to implement the gray wolf optimization algorithm to solve the load balancing problem based on the system model that I have uh, described just now, we need to designate the position of each gray wolf as the uh, the optimization variable of the problem, of the loop balancing problem. So for uh, this study, uh, it designates the positions of the gray wolf as the 3D coordinates, uh, compa uh, comp compilation of the 3D coordinates of all the area based stations. And then we also need to uh, have a fitness function where the gray wolf optimization algorithm uh, aims to optimize. Uh, it can be a uh, a function that is aimed to be minimized or to be maximized. Uh, since our, uh, since the load balancing problem is to maximize the sum logarithmic function of the load of each uh, area based stations, so it is natural for the fitness function to be also aimed to be maximized. Um, so in this study, the objective function of the load balancing problem, which is the sum logarithmic function of the load of each uh, area based stations, is part of the uh, fitness functions that is to be uh, maximized by the gray wolf optimization algorithm. And it also takes into account the quality of service requirement of each user, where the requirement is actually converted into a penalty function, where it will uh, reduce the fitness uh, function value if 
the quality of service requirement is not satisfied. So you can see this is the fitness, uh, the penalty function derived from the quality of service requirement of the user. So um, in order to uh, implement the Grey Wolf optimization algorithm and make use of this uh, fitness function to find the, uh, to solve the load balancing problem, uh, we have a set of procedures as shown here. So in the Grey Wolf optimization procedure, first uh, set of potential solutions. Each uh, in the Grey Wolf optimization algorithm, each potential solution is the position of a Grey Wolf. So there will be a number of uh, Grey Wolf position, which are the potential solutions of the 3D coordinates of the uh, area based stations. Um, in this uh, study, uh, it considers that uh, the user association is solved using uh, a greedy algorithm uh, where the user will choose the area based stations that can achieve highest achievable effective capacity. Okay, so with this uh, greedy algorithm, it can determine what is the, uh, where, uh, the solution for C, the user association level. Then the next thing is to uh, uh, combined with the uh, potential solutions of the 3D coordinates in each agreeable positions, okay, and calculate the fitness function using this uh, fitness function equation. Then we will know uh, uh, which gray wolf has the higher or highest fitness function. So since we, uh, in this study, aims to maximize the fitness function, so uh, the higher the fitness function value, the better. And after calculating uh, the fitness function value of all the gray wolves, then the best gray wolf can be identified. So the best gray wolf uh, uh, is actually uh, the gray wolf positions that corresponds to the highest fitness function value. And then based on that, uh, we can update the position of each uh, gray wolf using the uh, pet hunting behavior equations that we have uh, shown in the previous slides just now. And it will give a new positions of the gray wolves, uh, which will uh, again give a new fitness values. So this will be repeated again, uh, selecting the area based stations with the highest achievable effective capacity based on the new positions of the uh, gray wolf, which actually correspond to new positions of the 3D coordinates of the area based stations. And then recalculating the fitness function values for each uh, uh, gray wolf with the new uh, uh, solutions, identify the best gray wolf again, okay, and repeat all these processes uh, until the maximum number of iterations has been reached. Okay, and thus, after the uh, the, whole, uh, the entire algorithm, the best gray wolf will be the final solution uh, for the uh, loop balancing problem. Okay, so this is how uh, gray wolf optimization algorithm can uh, solve the loop balancing problem in error based station uh, next. So to um, evaluate the performance of the uh, gray wolf optimization based loop balancing technique, uh, it is compared with several uh, state of the art. Uh, uh, 3D placement and user association schemes. Um, we evaluate uh, based on these three uh, performance metrics. James Fairness Index, which is defined by this uh, formula. Okay, it, the higher the uh, Fairness Index value, the better. So it will indicate the more balanced uh, load distribution if the Fairness Index value is higher. We also uh, evaluate the uh, blocking probability, meaning how, how many users, uh, the percentage of the number of users which, uh, which could not satisfy their QoS requirements. And as, as, as a result, they are not associating with any area of decisions. And finally, we evaluate based on the total sum effective capacity that can be achieved by the entire network. So um, here shows the performance of the uh, Grey Wolf optimization based uh, loop balancing schemes and also other uh, 3D placement and user association schemes. So we can see that uh, the Grey Wolf optimization uh, achieves the lowest uh, probability of blocking and uh, also uh, achieve uh, the highest uh, James Fairness Index, which means it has the best uh, load balancing performance. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the sum achievable effective capacity is uh, uh, considerably good uh, up to a certain number of users, and eventually it is, uh, becomes uh, inferior to the R&D scheme and also the PD scheme. But this is because as the number of users increases, uh, for the grey wolf optimization to maintain the balance uh, of the to maintain the balance loop distribution among the ABS, the area based stations, and also to ensure the uh, low probability of blocking, uh, there is some sacrifice on the some effective capacity. Okay, next um, we look at the other technique that have been considered for solving the loop balancing problem among uh, area based stations, and this technique is called the particle swarm optimization. 
it is a swarm intelligence uh, technique inspired from the food uh, finding behavior of bird flocks and fish schools. So it's a um, much simpler, uh, much simpler uh, technique with these two equations as the key uh, optimization mechanisms. So uh, one is the velocity update uh, formula and the other is the position update formula. So basically it models the behavior of a bird looking for uh, food. So here the X is actually the position of the particle, which is the uh, actually the particle uh, refers to the bird. Right? So uh, this equation models the move movement or the moving behavior of a bird that flies toward the best uh, position or location that has the food. So you can see in this uh, figure here, so assuming that uh, the current best, the best position found by all the birds so far is here. And personally, the best position uh, found by the bird, one of the bird itself is here. Then the bird will fly around these locations, okay, based on the uh, distance between its personal best uh, position and the global best position. So it forms the uh, velocity update equation shown in this formula here. And when it moves based on this uh, trajectory, okay, the new position is updated, which is uh, reflected by this position update equation. So this is how simple it is, uh, the particle swarm optimization. And it has been shown to uh, solve many uh, continuous value uh, optimization problems and pose uh, uh, advantages in terms of simplicity and the ease of implementation. Um, so to implement the particle swarm optimization technique for loop balancing among the area based stations, um, so this study uh, it considers uh, trying to maximize the loop balance among area based stations based on alpha fans, which is a generalized uh, DVD function defined for uh, different fairness uh, notion. So in this study, they consider that the load of each area based station as the achievable effective capacity of the area based station. And similar to the uh, Grey Wolf optimization uh, load balancing study, they also consider the quality of service requirement such that each user's uh, achievable uh, effective capacity must exceed a certain threshold. And in this study, they consider maximizing the sum uh, function, sum alpha fairness function, where the alpha fairness function is defined here. So you can see that uh, the alpha value actually determines the expression of the alpha fairness function. For example, if alpha is one, then this function is a logarithmic function, which corresponds to proportional fairness. And if the alpha is set to a larger number, then the maximization of this function in this problem will uh, help to drive the loop balance even more, uh, more fair. And, uh, more, that means the loop distribution becomes more fair and more evenly uh, distributed among the area based stations. So to use the particle swarm optimization to solve the loop balancing problem described earlier, here, uh, similar to the uh, Grey Wolf optimization, we need to designate the uh, position of the particles as the uh, so, uh, optimization variables of the problem. So it is similar to the Grey Wolf optimization where the position of the particle is the uh, 3D coordinates of, the area, of all the area based stations. And the fitness function here uh, will be just the, it's just the objective function of the loop balancing problem unlike the previous uh, study, because uh, in, this, in the study that uses the particle swarm optimization, they solve the uh, quality of service requirement uh, during the user association part. So uh, the general procedure of the particle swarm optimization that solves the loop balancing problem is shown here, where they first initialize a set of potential sol solutions. Each potential solution is actually the uh, particle position. And because the particle's position only captures uh, the 3D coordinates of the, uh, all the area-based stations, the user association part still, still need to be solved. So here in this study, they use the convex optimization to solve it, where in this step, the quality of service requirements is actually taken into account. And uh, from convex optimization theory, uh, this study uh, derives this uh, algorithm to solve the user association uh, part of the problem. So once they get the user association uh, solution, then with the potential solutions from the particles combined with the user association, uh, solution, they can calculate the fitness using this fitness function. Then they can identify uh, which particle has the best fitness function, which, uh, and then they will also identify each particle's best solution so far. Okay. Then with this uh, information, they can update the 
uh, the position of each particle using the velocity and position update formulas that we have seen just now. And if, uh, with this, they can they repeat the process because with the new positions, then they could they will uh, uh, lead to a new user association solution and new fitness values. So these processes from step two to five will be repeated until a certain number of iteration has been reached. And after all this process, the best solution would be the the final solution would be the best solution found so far by the entire population of the particles. Okay, so here shows the uh, results achieved by the uh, particle swarm optimization for load balancing. Uh, here it is compared with the same uh, state of the art techniques and also the same performance metrics used in the previous study, uh, which is what, uh, which is uh, using the grail optimization technique. Uh, here we can see that the uh, performance of the uh, particle swarm optimizations uh, outperform those uh, achieved by the state of the arts. And in part, uh, notably, uh, the, uh, the particle swarm optimization achieves a better effective capacity because it designates the load of each area based station as the effective capacity achieved by the area based, uh, area -based stations. Okay, finally, I would like to conclude uh, this talk and provide some future directions. So, in conclusion, uh, nature inspired approaches are quite promising for 3D placement of uh, area based stations in load balancing. And we can consider uh, the following future directions where we can solve 3D placement and user association together in achieving good balance among the area stations. And there are many other techniques such as the uh, artificial number algorithm, real optimization algorithm, and many more in uh, uh, solving the loop balancing problem through the 3D placement and user association mechanisms. And of course, uh, we could also consider using these techniques to uh, solve the loop balancing problem among the ground terrestrial base stations and also the area base stations taking into account the interference between the aerial base stations and the terrestrial ground base stations. So this is the end of my talk. Thank you very much for listening.